Hello and welcome to Tykes TV. Uh, just setting up things, so we're just running a bit late. So, yeah, uh, thanks for people who are in the live already. I've got Andy in Red Corner, the Beard of Tyke, Ryan. Uh, so, on, we're going to be getting on about Reading Game because we're going to do a preview for that as well. And then we'll on about general discussions. Uh, is the uh, unresting camp? Players don't seem to be playing to full potential. Uh, you know, the clinging on be as, you know, more or less his fingernails. Uh, into the playoff after a sudden dramatic loss in form over the past month or so. Uh, but yeah, Andy, I'll come to you first, mate. Uh, Reading game tomorrow, you'd be looking yeah. at this thinking, yep, yeah, we're at home, it's a winnable game. Yeah. But we know what we've been like at home recently. Um, it's going to be a tricky one, mate. It's going to be tough. Um, I mean, Reading, it looks like they've got no to play for as such. I don't think they'll go down. They're not going to go up, are they? Um, a tricky animal to play against especially when um you know you're not in form you um <laughs> i don't know it, it's I, I mean even at this stage of season um it's it's going to be a, a tricky game and you know there's only barnsley football club that can get to like a couple of points off at second spot and now nah, they're looking obvious uh as shoulders it's it, it's going to be, um, a, I think it's going to be a weird game tomorrow. I honestly do. I think there's going to be some sort of atmosphere, not in a good way, uh, mm. if I'm honest. Um, they just don't look like a club. That's it, playoffs, um, to be honest. Um, I, I don't know what's gone wrong. Um, if summer has gone wrong, I don't know. But we just don't look like the same team um i've said after that bolton game when we drew uh, against bolton at home we've not beaten same since uh so i don't know if something's gone off after that um i don't know but i mean i'm the most i think i'm the most optimistic barnsley fan out there um and i said on one of my videos yesterday um i'm not confident that we're going to even make playoffs now if i'm honest um and well, it, pains me, it pains well, me it pains me to say that it really does um th there is certain players that i personally think as down tools players that i do think know um the next end player uh next season and i think that is a factor um, we'll come on to that a bit later it, on, Ben Andy, because I want to tie some yeah. team with that with, with things we've seen on socials yeah. as well with, okay. with certain players and that. But it's a good point what you made. It's a good point what you made that way. Certain players and that, you know, loss of form. Yeah. Uh, we all know what you're on about, you know, so we will come on to that. But yeah. I mean, Alan, I mean, Alan, uh, evening, and Andy Sharp, evening, Scott Gilmore, Reese Croft, and Jed Sharp. Thanks for joining. There's a lot of someone's brought up FA Cup with, uh, you know, Orsham. So, is well, we kind of tie all that in. But just going back to the Reading game, I mean, Alan said here, Ryan, he said, don't worry, we'll, uh, we'll, we, we will come good tomorrow. But, again, it's like... I hope he's right, no, no, Yeah, no, no disrespect to teams that have been to Oakwell this season is that, you know, they, sh they should have been beating them kind of sides. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not that we're taking things for granted, but like what uh, Andy said earlier on, for me, I feel the same is that I don't feel like we're in the playoffs like compared to last season. This season seems to be we're just going through the motions. I was more excited last season, you know, and I was thinking, well, we can we finish, we can we what we're going to be looking at. Nah, for, for me, it, it feels like we're trying to fight to get in playoffs rather than we are in playoffs, uh, Ryan. It does, mate. It, it feels exactly like that. I said in I said in this previous video, doesn't it? It feels like the lads. They're just seeing like there's no to play for. They can't go up. They can't go down. A bit like Reading's position tomorrow, and they're just going through motions and and you know and just seeing it out till end of the season. Or, or I, I, like I said, I'm sure that's not the case, but that's what it that's what it looks like to, to I think to a lot of fans that what's look it looks like to us because it, it seems to me like the togetherness has gone. That togetherness we had when we had right up to Derby against Bolton, we looked like we were flying and we looked like we were flying towards that second place. Mm. And then since that two all draw, you know, which was a very it was a very disappointing result against Bolton. You know, I think it were it were it were a bit of a body blow. 
But surely, you know, since then, we've just, we've just it hasn't even got, it, it's fallen off face of earth. It's literally just dropped off face of a cliff and gone, wow, I'm gone. As yeah. form's gone, as style of play's gone, as attacking's gone, as defence has gone. It's just, listen, all sides suffer, um, you know, dips in form, but oh, what a time to have it. And we have had a massive dip in form. And it just appears that there's there's just something not right, mate. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm genuinely genuinely hoping that Alan's right and we and we can turn it around tomorrow. But I mean, on on on, on current form, we are on current form. We aren't winning another game this season. Right. On current He's form, how we're playing, how we've been playing these last seven games, and certainly these last three or four, we aren't winning a bloody thing, mate. Um, right. Unfortunately, well, so I'm I'm, I'm genuinely come. hoping that we're going to get a turn around in form tomorrow. We'll come on to that, and I'm just going to follow that on. So, Reese Croft, thanks for joining. Thanks for your continual support. And I hope it all went well, mate, when you went up in Legend Suite for your uh, complimentary. But I saw you at Mount and, and your brother, and appreciate your continuing support at the channel. Uh, cheers, uh, Reese. So, going back to that, and uh, Andy, what Ryan's just been saying there, is that dipping for me, can't see winning another game this season. And we're all kind of yeah. off it. Uh, off, up air kind of thing is where is next wing going to come from in this form that yeah. we're in changes tomorrow would you be making any changes uh you know considering that we're at home don't press the panic button you're hearing Collins's you know interview which is sometimes a bit baffling to say the least changes would be made people I've seen people say oh sat jalo what front of me so I'm thinking it's a lot of pressure on putting on a young kid to be saying look you yeah. know this is this this goes back to me when we're in championship. It's like it's all right. We could chuck a young anymore, chuck any match, we chuck Akroyd in. You can't keep doing that. You should have professionals well, out right. here to do that, shouldn't you? To do the job. Would you make any changes yeah. tomorrow? Um, I mean, again, this is what I said on my video yesterday. Um, even at this stage of season, uh, I don't know what team's going to be, and to me, that's a concern. Um, changes. I can't see Kane being at starting eleven, if I'm honest. Um would you start him? Um again it all depends on what's going in the background. Um No, but as you I'll, as you as a gaffer, would you be starting him over Russell? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. If that's providing if Kane's head is in it, um which I mean, I don't know if it is, um, but I'm expecting Kane going at end of season anyway, regardless what uh, division we're in. Um, but I would start him on the Russell, definitely, without a doubt. But that, like I said, that's, it all depends on his mindset, which, you know, we don't know. Um, <laughs> up front, uh, I think McAtee's been a hit and miss, if I'm honest. Um, Cole... Um, <laughs> I know he's like is he still leading goal scorer but to me it looks again he looks like one of the players who's just packed in and ready to uh, get his up beach in all inclusive um, I don't know it's a difficult one um, do you start Cosgrove with McAtee personally again Cosgrove it, it does work hard but I don't think it's really worked out for him here. Um, I, I've always said I don't think it's fair on Jallo um, being thrown in because I don't agree with throwing young ones in. But I've come to mindset now where I think he offers more than Cosgrove. Um, I don't know. It's <laughs> it's a difficult one. Um, I don't know. I, th I think there might be... Um, probably changes it back and I'm, if it would add to me I'm, I would play McCart is another one uh, to me just way too slow cumbersome um, I, I think best for a band bunch is putting Williams at centre back and I, I never thought I'd say that um, <laughs> Jesus. I don't know I don't make McCart mate I, I honestly really? don't hate him. I, I honestly don't hate him. He's too slow. He's cumbersome. And I think best for Van Bunch is put Williams at centre back and I don't know, stick O'Keefe in somewhere. Um but I, I 
like I say, even at this stage of season, when we've only got a few games left, I still don't know what team's going to be. And <laughs> it's crazy, I, think, isn't it? I, think, I think that says it all, to be honest. Right. Ryan, changes. Right. I know it's going to sound crazy, but I agree with Andy. Because, and, and, and listen, hear me out. I know we're going to get pelters and, we, you know, everyone's saying that Williams struggled at centre-back and I'm going to give you my reasoning why. I understand that when Williams were playing at centre-back with that back three, it wasn't it wasn't perfect, was it? It wasn't perfect. No. But it's better than what, we do, than what we've got now. It's better than yeah. what we've got now because the back three at the minute are not clicking at all. De Givne looked better when he was playing at middle. And he picked ball up and moved with it out of the centre all the time. McCarty looks for the left or right, left or right every single time. Even when Kane and Connell come short and shout for it, he still goes left or right. Now, I know it sounds crackers. <laughs> I'm probably going to get pelters for it. But like I said, I appreciate that it was far from perfect when Williams were in at centre-back. But what we have available to us at the moment, I think that Williams, the give neat medal and, and, and Earl on left would be his best option that we've got at, as as it, as it currently stands. As it currently stands. Because, like, yeah. I agree with you. I just think McCart's just a bit slow. He's a bit what slow. What about Nathan James? What about always... Nathan James? Yeah. Bench and, for a bit. Again, I'd love to... I mean, yeah. I've, heard, I've heard really good things about him, but is Neil Collins going to take a risk on a, on a young lad so late in the season? Mm. On an unknown known? I, mm. I, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd probably welcome it, to be fair, Neil, but it's unlikely, isn't it? It's unlikely. Mm. And that's why I'm on about mm. Williams coming in. And I'll probably get pelters for it, but it's just I was having to think about it, just thinking, you know, given the choice, I won't have him mm. in at centre back. Interesting, but, interesting. But it is what it is, you know. I think we're out where we are at minute. Um, yeah, and people in the comments, I that, I bring, I know your thoughts on that. I know, be interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, bring, I bring Kane in for uh, I bring Kane in for Russell. Mm. And then up top, I mean, you got to play McAtee just because of his ability to. Um, just because of his ability to, to, to chase the ball down, it, you know, there's always a chance of something happening when McAtee's up there. I do like his energy. He, he ain't on form at the minute, but he also ain't getting a lot of service. Um, and I think he goes, yeah. he goes all over the place, only looking for the ball and sometimes finds his centre position. But he's the only one that closes down from front. So we've got to start with McAtee, and then it's literally a minute based on current form. It's a toss up between Cosgrove and Cole, um, and maybe, maybe taking a chance with with Jallo. Do you know Maybe what? Having Do a chance know? with you, taking a chance with Jallo because he's looked sharp when he's come on, mate. He looked, he got that goal against um Charlton, which some say it were onside, some were offside. Regardless of that, it were a really good finish under pressure. Mm. And then he had that really good chance of the night where he's flipped it up and volleyed it. And literally, if that's if that's on target, it's in because keeper's not down quick enough to it. So potentially bring Jallo in, you know what I mean? And, and I wouldn't normally agree with that because I think I don't want to blow the young lad too, you know, run legs off a young lad too much, but those other strikers are not in form at all and we need goals and he is a you goal know, machine when he gets going. Do you know what? After all this debate here tonight, right, and I'm hoping, I think Dave Jones is in the house from Bolton. After all this debate tonight, we are debating and we're still skimping and scratching and scraping together a piss 11. <laughs> it's true, though. I'm just coming out with some true, stuff. Yeah. You've come out, and, and I'm thinking, I'm looking around me and I'm thinking, other, time, other teams like thinking about this, we're having to put this and put this. I, I think it's it, this goes to highlight and show how unbalanced our squad is. We're having to think and scratch, and scratch about and put the other teams out there was recruited. Miles better, by the way, and not just yeah. in summer, but in January. Oh, absolutely. And we're at this stage of the season now, and we're having to even think about who oh, can we go up front for this for form, and who oh, can we go up back here, and who oh, we're going to. But the other sides out there, I'm hoping, Dave, I think, Dave, yeah, Dave's in, evening, fellas. The other sides around there must be looking at us and be thinking, such as Stevenage and this other, but we've played and lost against, we must be thinking, right, lads, we've put so much today, we've dropped corner foot bench, and we've got leading goal squad. They must be rubbing the hands of them. Ah. They, they know their game plan. They, they've done their homework. We're still thinking, right, how are we going to approach this then? Um, well, we'll try putting O'Keefe in there, but no, we'll have Williams on right, and then what we'll do, we'll bring O'Keefe on for Williams as a sub, and then in second day, we'll put O'Keefe out to left wing back, and we'll put Cotter on bit. We're playing, putting square pegs in round holes here. Yeah, mate, you're right. No other yeah. side, surely. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, people in comments here, someone might say, 
you know, other teams are doing it. But correct me if I'm wrong, uh, people in live, I'd be interested to know your thoughts on this. We should be going in this stage of season now saying, right, we in a while 11 here, barring the suspension and back, fair enough. We should know that's the strongest 11, is game plan. And we're still thinking about the stuff. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting debate that because we both come out with different opinions about Williams and what should we put James in or who's going up front. And again, this is what I like about it because we've all got his own each foot mindset. We should be like saying, no, I'll keep it as it is. We're great starting 11 back. I'm not even thinking about substitute expense, by the way. Back and go tata that. I'm yeah. looking at my starting 11 at minute and out from a bonus. I mean, Josh Benson's going off at radar. Not, and he were on bench. Oh, so he's got off at radar again. Interesting. Uh, Scott Gilmore. Uh, I'll get through some uh, comments, actually. Sorry, guys, for people in the uh, comment section. Oh, and Gills, if there's any. Uh, Scott Gilmore. Interesting one, these. Uh, no doubt we'll pick up on some because there's going to be some uh, debates about to be had. There's no way we can continue playing badly this season. To me, has been a huge joke in how we've played, to be honest. Uh, the question is, if we do lose, how much of a crowd will ask for clones to be sat sacked? That will start in a way, uh, uh, Stephen and John, that... Uh, there'll, be, there'll, be more than, there'll be more than there has been. <laughs> uh, play every British way. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm worried uh, I'm worried about tomorrow. We have one team with zero pressure versus a team yep. with all the pressure. Correct. Dave Jones. Evening, Dave. Thanks for you joining, mate. We'll come on to Bolton. Uh, your prediction, Neil, at the beginning, <laughs> beginning uh, of season, kitchen going, styles going, finishing fifth looks spot on. I wish I had a bet on that and all uh, reads to be fair. Cole not bothered, keep him out of team. He's wanted to go. Scott yeah. Gilmore, I'm probably being too harsh on the lads, but we've been usually lucky to be uh, to be in playoffs because of how we played the whole season. And I truly think the luck we've been having has now come, uh, come to us. Maybe so. Uh, Dave yeah. Jones again. Dave Jones. Uh, Reading plays some good stuff at Bolton, mate. Not a team to be underestimate. Tell us as those lads playing now. This is the thing, uh, Dave. Uh, Reese Croft, uh, Scott Gilmore. I'd play Jallo with Cosgrove and McAtee because Jallo can learn from the tool. I think his pace and trickery can help us move, move and call. We'll have a dot. Samuel Batty. We'd rather have Nathan Jen. Oh, we'd rather have Nathan Jen. Said about McCart. Dreadful. Uh, McCartney sending him back. He's useless. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> Put Marsh and Jalabut front. No. Uh, I'm concerned about playoffs, even if we get him. This is, yeah. So, right. Before we come on to any more uh, comments, because we've got a fair few to go through here, uh, and I don't want to miss anybody out, but we'll, this is going to be an interesting one. And again, let us know your thoughts on it. Score prediction for tomorrow. So, I'll go into you, Andy in red corner, or in top corner. Uh, what's your score prediction for uh, Reading, mate? Um, <laughs> it's. A, I mean, regardless of who we're playing, I don't care if it's Reading or Man City or Man United. I always want Barnsley to win. Um, and again, I think I've said it all the way throughout the season. I think we'll concede. Um, I'm hoping for a scrappy 2-1, but I've got a, a feeling, um, if I'm honest, it's going to be a bar draw. Uh, a one-one, uh, which is going to be no good to us. Um, mm. So, a little bit indecisive, to be honest. I'm hoping for two-one. Um, I'll take any win, but there's just something not right at minute, and I don't know. I'm not. I'm not confident about tomorrow. Um, if I'm totally honest, Ryan, prediction, oh. mate. Um. I mean, it's understandable, Andy, why you why you're not confident. I think I don't think there's many Barnsley fans seriously are that confident. Um, if if they were if they were being really honest, um, oh, if we play anything like we've been playing in the last few games, we're going to get beat, and I think we'll get beat two 0 um, I'm I'm I'm, op I'm hoping for a win, but. I just can't see at minute the change round. He seems so stubborn, does Neil Collins, in sticking in what's going on. It, whatever's happening at club doesn't seem to be that cloud doesn't seem to be lifting. And I've never, I think, I've, all the time I've been coming on show with Neil. I never, I've never predicted Barnsley to get beat, but mm. I, I, I hope I'm wrong, mate. But I, I think we're going to lose. I think we're going to get beat at home, mate. 
I think we're going to get beat two now. Really? Yeah. Uh, and again, I can't wait to go to comments for people leaving their thoughts at score draws. In. Um, I'm going with Andy on this. I, I look, it pains me to say it, like what Andy said, no matter who we play, I want it to be, whether it be Barcelona, I know what people be saying, but if you don't know what I mean, no matter if you're Barcelona or Barnet, I'm wanting Barnes to win. Absolutely. All the time, all day long, all day long. Absolutely. I, I want but, to be wrong, mate. I absolutely yeah. want to be wrong. I'm just trying to think, just but, looking at recent form and where we're playing at minute and, and what's been going on at home. But, being realistic, yeah. isn't it? Being realistic. I'm, happy, I'm, I'm more than happy yeah. to be proved wrong and have egg yeah. on my face, mate. More yeah, than happy. I'm, I'm saying, I'm going with Andy. I think it's just going to be a draw. We, we've always got to concede a goal in his locker all day long, no matter what we do. No matter what we do, we're, there's a goal there waiting to happen. We're indecisive and sit back. Again, will we be able to create chances? Reading's going to take a game to us. Are we going to be able to match them? And to be, to be fair, if we're playing out like we did against Stevenage, we, we, we're just getting it and umping it upfield, hoping for the best, hoping that it's going to fall to someone. We're going to fail what fall well short uh, well short because we're just cutting out midfield. We have got to create chances. Well, have you missing out your creative uh, players like such as uh, Connell who wants it more to press it out, uh, spread it out? If you bypass them all together, all you're doing is like like we said earlier, uh, Ryan, in the previous video, I think it was, I think you all mentioned it. It's like yeah. rugby. You're kicking it into touch all the time. Where yeah. it's temporary get shut, which is fine, but you're not creating all. Pressure's just going to come back on you. It's like a short yeah. relief. That, that's all right if you're hanging on to a lead, Neil. It is. It's all right if you're hanging on to a lead. Game, no, it's not good when you're one down, mate. No, is it chill? No. Uh, Sean Curtin, uh, Curtin, sorry. I'm concerned about, uh, well, I'm concerned about uh, playoffs, even if we get in the uh, we'll get sloppy goals away at back, can't hit a barn door up front, middle not acting, not pressing. If not, improve fast playoffs, uh, we're not to make. And to be fair, even if, it, if we're in playoffs, and I hope I'm proven wrong again, I want to get promoted in championship. But we'll get on about that a bit later on, a, d a debate about that, because I've got things about, stuff about players, what really grinding me at the minute um, about this. Um, but I think even in playoffs, I don't think personally we'd be strong enough for the two legs. No, but for me, and it kind of it kind of worried me a bit as such when Cadden's like saying, "Well, oh, we need fans to get behind us after Stevens game." This was a bit of a, a piss tech for me. We said, "We need fans to get behind us. Uh, we want to give him a day out at Wembley." Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. We need to concentrate on league first to make sure we're in playoffs for the start. Yeah. Then we need to like concentrate and beat in the teams where we're going to play in playoffs before we even get to Wembley. So don't even start getting about the fans cheering you. Give something to cheer about on the pitch first before yeah. you even start saying we want to get fans from it. Fans need to get behind and get help us out. And don't even go away with that comment. Give something on pitch first for us to get up as ass off at seats to get behind you to cheer you on it. Which both ways this? Yeah, start yeah. with so, Reading Saturday. Uh, Jesus uh, Christ. Okay. Start with Coming Reading Saturday. Buddy Wembley let's talk. Go let's, let's, let's go from there. Let's not look at Wembley because we're Jesus. nowhere near. We're nowhere near it, are we? It, it pisses me off with stuff like that, comments like that. I'm thinking, it's like we sign a striker comments early doors at the beginning of the season. How bad would that come back to bite him? I'd run it back, innit? Don't talk about Wembley at this stage of oh. season. It, it, it goes to, that proves to me then that the mentality is like already in the heads. Oh, we didn't play offs, we're gonna be a Wembley. It's like focus on the game, what's coming up. Yeah, don't need to talk like that coming out. You know what I mean? In around us. Concentrate on uh, next yeah. opposition first. But if you look at his record as well, that's uh, one of the, what, uh, I think it would it would it Dan that sent it over to us about his record against top eight this season. Mm -hmm. Not being marvelous, has it? <laughs> Not by a So it, even like you said, it, as as Sean just said, even if we get even if we get into even if we get into playoffs, are, are we are we going to do what we in playoffs? It's, on, on current form, mate, it's not looking likely at all, is it? No, no, no. Yeah. This is a good one by Infinity Loop. I, I've not really ne known that name come up before, so it's great that you're on. Let us know what team support, because uh, this is a, this is an interesting one. I'll come to you on this, Andy, with this. Yeah. It says your midfield should be running rings around the rest of League One. Are yeah. they individually letting you down, or is Collins not getting the best out of them? What do you think of that? That's a, that's a decent question, yeah. that, to be fair. A bit from column A, a bit from column B, I would think. Because, um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, uh, whatever's going off at club, I think it is a little bit more deeper than just uh, 
our head coach, if I'm honest. Um, but you've got a question, uh, Collins, um, as tactics and subs. Um, what he's put on. I mean, they, they've been baffling, I must admit. Um, but yeah, a, a little bit of both uh, from there. Um, like I said before, I don't think some players um, has actually get up and looking forward to next season at the at next clubs. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, I don't think Collins has helped with um, team comment. selection and subs. So, like I said, a bit of both there for me. Ryan, I mean, it's following on from uh, what Andy said, and like this question as well. When you look at the midfield, it's the same midfield trio that Duff had last season, Kane, yeah. Cole and Phillips. And it seems to be, like what Andy said, a bit more from Colin B, which is like, looks like Colin's not getting best out of them. Do you agree yeah, with that? Yeah, I, I, th- I, think, I think there's a bit from both sides. But what I will say in, 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 um, in midfield's defence, when, it, when, it's, Kay, when it's Kay and Connell and, uh, and Phillips, <clears throat> who were best, who were best midfield in the league last year um, and probably should be best midfield in the league this year as well, or certainly up there with best anyway. Um, but at minute, certainly at last, certainly since Bolton game in these last seven games, we're completely bypassing midfield anyway. We're, we're, we're making them largely ineffective because we're just going straight at the top of them. Mm. And, and I said it last, I said it in the last video. As most talented players that we've got in the squad are those three midfield. Yeah, you know, it argue they're probably as most talented players we've got, or, or some of the most talented players we've got in the squad. Mm. And we're not utilizing mm. as much as we should. And, and when we've played as better football, and when we had that really good period that got us into that really good position, we played the ball on the floor and we played nice football. And at a minute, we're just bypassing, we're just bypassing that midfield at a minute. Mm-hmm. So I think it's more that um that he's being they're being let down by coach. But I think I don't think there's a Barnsley fan that good, you know, that out there that could say that those three are, are as good as they were last season. Mm-hmm. Good so, good question about the infinity loop. Good question about that. Yeah, good yeah, question. Yeah. I'd, I'd say it's more coaching letting them down than then than them not being out of than them, you know, not giving their all. But no, no. they're also not as good as they were like them three because them three were magic last year when they were yeah. playing well. I don't think yeah. Connell's been as good, if I'm honest. No, no. And again, do you put back down to any, coach and not getting best out of him? Probably, probably style yeah. of football. I don't know, but it, yeah, I, could be. I don't think he's. I don't think he's been as good. Honestly, no. don't. No, going to be interesting to see what play play of the season is because Pine's got it. He played two games for that month. He got goal a month and player <laughs> player player at month and he only played two games. That says a lot about the rest of the side. But we'll move on from that. We can't wait for end of season one. Jeez, uh, Jed Sharp. It says McAtee has scored more goals when brought on as a sub than starting. That's interesting. Uh, Dave Jones, laughable mate. At this stage, should be <laughs> yeah, he should have a solid team now. Yeah, it's it's laughable mate. Sense, yeah. Uh, Infinity always tough uh, with a, a new manager at Pompey. We got oh, sorry, Portsmouth fan. Uh, appreciate you joining Infinity. Uh, at Pompey, we got lucky third time of asking Jacket Callum and Messina. Yeah, yeah, true, it is, it's that's true. Sometimes it Where's just this... has to be right, sometimes it just has to be right fit, doesn't it? It's right yeah. coach, at right time with right players, yeah. And and Portsmouth have, have, have hit the jackpot this year, but again, and also well, it's backing right, your manager right as well, season, isn't it? it? Yeah, it's the right season in League One. And then this season, the bit, the bit, the bit, the bit jackpot, and the 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 the, the flying up out there really. Let's Stability, be back your manager, back your coach, and build on it. Not sell your best assets and try to bounce yeah. for books, which were ironic when you look at agent fees what we paid out this year. What a joke that is! Outrageous. So we'll get on about that. Someone else come up. We're about replays and all this that over. I'm thinking we're buying players from non-league, and how come we've got one up there? You know, top air for bloody agents fees. We're signing them from bloody walking. <laughs> we must be on some agent fees, aren't in walking. Not as if we're signing from Buddy, you know, uh, West Ham or West Brom or something, you know, top side. Jesus. Uh, what about Kundi? Yeah, another one who's injury. I think he'll be gone at the end of the season, if I'm being fair, Andy. Uh, I'm going big tomorrow. With, with uh, Kundi, uh, Neil, because I, I listened to a press conference um, from, from yesterday. I listened to I walk it dog this morning. I listened to I walk it dog this morning. And they asked Collins about him. And they pulled him out at game because, or pulled him out at squad because he picked up another little niggle. But they said he don't think he's going to be available for selection tomorrow. Yeah, so, he's only three games less, so I can't see it, him get the, got the, the question got asked by the press team but what about what about Robin Kundi? Because obviously he has a lot yeah. of the attributes that, 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 that Pines had as in size, 
yeah. you know, size and 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 structure. Um, sorry, I can't get my words out. His, his size, you know, he's, he's not quite as big as Pines, but um, but it, it, that's what that's what Colin said. He said he he, he got a l- l- little bit of a setback, so they pulled him out at squad, and he's it's unlikely that he's going to be available for selection tomorrow. I, I don't think he'll put a shirt on. I don't uh, think he's put on the again. Mate. No, no. Uh, Scott Gilmore looking uh, how we played recently. I'd say 2 1 trading, and that's uh, first time I predicted us to lose ever. Yeah, same, as Ryan, same as Ryan, same as Ryan Scott, to be fair. Same as Ryan, mate. Both teams will score, it's just who's going to score more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good comment. But Stephen has managed uh, our uh, lobs by just using the offside trap. Colin needs to rethink an idea. Colin's lost the dressing room, feels that way, doesn't it? Well. We'll, we'll come on to this one now because it's been grinding me all day. This uh, it's been proper grinding me all day, right? Uh, Ryan, I'll come to you first, Andy. Um, yeah. ask Colin's last dressing room. Um, well, in your opinion, sir, I'm not saying he has, but in your opinion, as he lost well, the dressing room, what you've seen. Well, first of all, if I'm honest, I've always said when Colin's got appointed, um, I ain't got a problem with. Collins, I think it goes a lot, lot deeper than Collins at minute. What's happening? Uh, but there's definitely some at the year. Um, that's not right. Um, I, I don't know whether it's lack of discipline. I don't know, but there's definitely some at not right. You don't have to be clumbo to figure that out. There's, <laughs> there's definitely some at not right there. Um, what about Spencer Close over, Andy? Sorry, mate. Probably, probably, not all, track, probably, not all at, <laughs> probably not all at dressing room, but I think, yeah, going back to what we said before, I, I think there is certain players that's um, not doing it, not pulling the weight, if you want to uh, term it that way. Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, does it all go back to recruitment? Um, like I say, it's not all Colin's fault. I don't, you know, I, that's my personal um yeah, I opinion. I, I don't think you can just pop it all on Collins because like I, said, I think it was a lot further. He can only work with what is given. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I think that's transfer window. Um I, I don't think we needed well I personally thought we needed two other strikers. Um and, and Collins which, wanted that as well. He did say he wanted yeah, a, Collins did want that, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, which which he didn't get. So he's only got what he can work with. Um but yeah, I think with certain players it probably has. Um but it, you know, we aren't being it no, it, it's a difficult one to call. But do you think there's egos involved in, in dressing room? Yeah, I, I, think I, no, I, I think, think there is. I think there is. I think there is, yeah. Um I don't think um I, I mean don't get me wrong, I've not got no against Herbie Kane. I think he's been a good servant for us, but I don't think he has got that little bit of a ego and he thinks he's probably better than club if i'm honest uh, that's how it comes across to me um and i think that there is other players out there as well um that i can also, think of one straight away me yeah um but yeah um i, I don't know it's it, like i said we haven't been it though it's a difficult one but i i, I don't think with certain players um i, I don't think some players well, it looks like to me that they don't want to play for him, if I'm honest. Yeah. Ryan, going on from what Andy's saying. Ah, in fact, I can think of two. I think it all plays me. Uh, but I'll let you have your answer, Ryan. I mean, does it look it, like I mean, Collins has lost the dressing room, mate? It, it, it seems that way. I don't know if he's completely lost the dressing room, but I think I think he's lost some players. I think it'd be fair yeah. to say. Uh, f- for me, the, the, the biggest clue is that the, the players clearly aren't buying into this style. They're not happy playing that way. You can see it in them, that, that, and they don't look like they know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And you know, even do like I said, even Doug O'Kane alluded to it in his report. It doesn't look like there's any style of yeah. play. He can't, he can't work. How, how long's Doug been watching Barnsley? He follows him up yeah. down country. He's, he's chief yeah. journalist for for for, Buddy, for for Chronicle, and he can't work out what they're doing. So there's no way fans are going to be able to work out. And it looks that way. And and you know, if you've lost belief in in, in your manager's tactics, then that to me it's like that is losing the dressing room, isn't it? It's lo- if you've lost your players and they don't believe in what you want to do. Or what you're trying to do, then yeah, you've lost you've lost the dressing room. 
like Andy says, you don't take don't take a you know don't take a bloody chief detective to work out what's going on, what's what's happening. It's it's not right, mate. It's not mm. right. We all that togetherness we had has gone. It's evaporated, and we look like strangers. They like I said, they're falling out with each other left right, left right and centre. Mm. But for me, they need to be a bit more professional about it, Neil, because they need to come out and play for fans because. Yeah. We aren't fans, yeah. they haven't got a job. We aren't fans, they haven't got that career. We aren't the fans. Yeah. Yeah. And we exactly. follow them up and down country. We come every week, we go up and down country, spending his brass, following and singing the name. Mm. Right? If you're upset and there's something's going on behind closed doors, I've, I've been professional enough to be able to put that to one side and give 100% for this club and not sat there sulking like big kids because you're not getting your own way. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not 100%. fair. It's not fair on fans. Whatever you've got going on internally, you need to put that to one side and put a shift in for, for fans because that's what because we are fans. They're in they're in they're in the sport. Well, there is, but it's a Sunday it's Sunday league. We are fans, isn't it? Yeah. So no, I agree, they, mate. They need, I to agree. Do, they need to do that for me. I agree, and again, it's like I get where you're coming from. With, you know, the, the players. I don't think players. No, I take that back. Some players, I think, do understand their role at the football club, as in. We're not just a football, but we're also like an idol or a role model for certain youngsters out there. Yeah. And I'm on about you, and we all know who they are. You'll you'll see lads wanting Luke Connell or Eddie Marsh at local lads, you know, Donovan Pines and stuff like that. We all know who they are, and that's fine. If you've got an issue going off at the club, regardless what it is, training or whatever it is, or you've got an issue with style of play, blah blah blah. That's to sort out. But when, like you said, there. Fans are going up and down country supporting them, no matter what weather it is. Great turnout. And you look at times going through motion. I watch a lot me in training. I love to I love to watch love to watch uh, uh, warm up. Sorry, that'll be cool, be neat. Sorry. Right, mate. When uh, when you watch the warm up and stuff like that. I, w- I watched a bit of an Arge, uh, not Arge, Arge, but a bit of a discussion and altercation with McAtee and another coach. I'm not saying who it was. About uh, not letting ball off to him for shooting practice. I'm looking at the Stevenage game. We've got Williams pointing to DeGivney, DeGivney pointing to Karen, Karen pointing to whoever it is. Phillips gesturing, you should have been Bims, you should have done that. And again, it's we go back to it again, and I'm fed up of saying it and like a broken record, but we haven't got strong enough characters or leads to deal with issues like this and nipping bud. Yeah. It's allowed to fester and build up and build up and build up yeah. until the country situation like now, after a Bolton game, after 55, 60 minutes against Sven, it's like I said, it's, it's fell off a cliff. We've just gone bang straight down. I'm looking on pitch me for a strong character, a strong someone to grab, literally grab it by a scruff of the neck and say, Right, this is what we're doing. This I will implement it. You're looking at Collins passing his little notes on it, some situations to well, you play in this position. You should have a strong enough captain or captains on that pitch because you've got 11 on there players to each know their own role and to help and yeah. support the others. When they give me, right? They give me score that own goal, unfortunate, right? I didn't see one Barnsley player, one Barnsley player go up to the give me. I'm not sure. Come on. It's all right, lad. Tap on shoulders, you know, yeah. move on. Not one Barnsley player went to the give me and said, right, get your head up. Still early in the game. Let's take this. Let's do it. Not one Barnsley player did that. Not one. I'm expecting a captain or captains on the pitch. Like I say, it's supposed to be a team effort. It's supposed to be a team effort. And at times, it looks like there's players out there, whether it's an ego issue, they're out of contract to end the season, reminds them elsewhere. I can, and I can see two people. I can see two people definitely be going me. One will be Williams, because when he did that uh, interview on Radio Sheffield at the beginning of the season, when he thought he was I'm better than this, I'm better than that, he thinks he's like a championship play a Premier League because Morris mm. and Woodrow and Mads Anderson got the moves. He's thinking about Ilk, right? And then yeah. you've got someone like Devante Cole, who was top goal scorer, but is you know, is not is off is off form. And I think he thinks he's a bit like a Callum Britton. He's a bit like Billy Big Bollocks. I've got I've got double figures in goals. I've got a you know I could see a lot a move lined up here. Right. You're in a League One side at the moment and you're in League One for a reason. You're not a championship player. You're a League One player at this minute. I expect you to be ripping it up in League One for Barnsley in a poor division and saying, right, Jordan Williams, you think you're best defender, right back or whatever, at Barnsley. I want you to be, not man at match every game, but I want you to be up there challenging for man at match. Mm. 
Same as Devante a call. He's in a nice period before there. Then all of a sudden, it's like, right, dig down. Let's get a result. Let's get... He's missed some sitters. Confidence plays a big part in football. I totally get that. But it's not as if it's time after time after time. But I'm looking at the bigger picture of the coaching staff. What's their take on this? They're still sketching and scratching like we were earlier. What's going to be a starting 11 tomorrow? There'll be many fans watching this now. There'll be many fans watching this now. They'll be eagerly waiting for the team lineup. We should already know what it's tip for starting you know 11. Like last season under yeah. We should know what it is. We knew what it was. We knew what it was under Duffy, didn't we? We could you it could did. literally it, it picked its end for a long time where where we were where, where we had that really good run and we were beating Wednesday and Plymouth and Derby. It, 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 it was the same team. It was the same team. No. Um anyway, that's my bit of rant over. But I think there's too many egos in the dressing room and there's not a strong enough character or characters in there to nip it in bud and sit yeah. and deal with it. Because I think that's festering on, on performances out there, what I'm seeing anyway. Uh, Julie Robinson, uh, thanks for you can join Julie. Uh, I don't think any players are confident. Uh, is there unrest with the manager in dressing room? And if not, what is the unrest for? And again, I, I think it's egos. I think some players think they're better than what they are. Go out there and show me. Show me, show fans. Show some fans players think they're bigger than club, Neil. Some players think yeah. they're too good to be here. Uh, yeah, and, I don't um, want them. I don't want them if I like that, Ryan. I don't yeah, know about you. I, I don't, mate. I'd, ra I'd, ra I'd, ra I'd rather have twenty threes in put running the socks off for us, mate. If I'm, yeah. if I'm being honest, but it's, it's, it, I want players that want to want to play for Barnsley. But there ain't one there ain't one player in that squad at this minute that are too good to play for Barnsley. Not not one. No. no. Andy. Well, certainly, if they are, they're not bloody showing it of late. Yeah. True. So. Um, it, it's like, you know, like you said, Neil. Sorry, Andy. It's like you said, like you said, Neil. Um, you know, if you're that good, go out and show it. Go and prove it. If you're that good and you think you're that good, you should be. You should stand out. You know, you should stand out massively at this level. You mm -hmm. tell me which player at the minute of late is standing out as excellent in that Barnsley team in this in this division. Because mm -hmm. any of them at the minute. Yeah. Yeah. True. But yeah, Andy, go on, mate. Uh, no, we're just going to uh, pick up on that and, you know, let's not forget about our Callum at Sunderland. Uh, he's another one who thinks he's better than what he is. And throughout this video, we've not even mentioned him. I know he's away on loan, like, but... Uh, let's Who was with you, though? Sunderland fans have <laughs> a very good opinion of him, have they? No. Yeah, sure. well, well, yeah, his game found out at, at a big club because there's no mm. hiding place there. And he's not as good as he makes art. And mm. let's be honest, um, you know, as, you know, whatever's happening at our club at minute, we've not really missed him anyway. So uh, I, I hope he don't come back at summer. Um, so I'll throw this one for you, Van Andy. That's yeah. the point you just made. I'll throw this one back at you. So I'll yeah. say, you know, Sunderland said, right, we're going to terminate his contract. Do you think he'd get into it starting 11 at Barnsley? Um, at minute, um, mm. probably. But I think that'll be just so they can just put it put him in shot window again, if I'm mm. honest. Um, but I don't want him back. He did the same to us last season when we needed everybody there. He thought he was better than everybody else and he went on loan to... Millwall, um, so players like that always got that attitude, and I think it's rubbed off on certain players like we've just touched upon. Um, no point being here; just, just go, just you know, just go. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I get it, mate. I get, I get the footballers, and you know, and when they're seeing the mates go to clubs like you know, like like Kitch has gone, and, and and Bobby Thomas has gone from last season, yeah. and Brad Brad Collin, they've all, all gone to Coventry as it happens. You know, and then Mads has gone to Luton. You know, they, they were they all mates. They probably all know what they're earning and what they're earning at Barnsley. You know, I think I think Kitch is on about seventeen grand a week or something daft like that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, and I get it. I get it. You know what I mean? Because I'd want to get paid the big bucks as well. But yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, no, no I get all that. But while yeah. you're at the club, while you're at the club, you represent the club that's given you the opportunity yep. and put you in that shop window and given you the opportunity to get to that place to get that move. Have mm. have some respect. And 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 do your all for the club, and don't sit there thinking you're better than the club because no football is better than any club at any level no, in the entire no. history. Nobody's no, bigger no. than any any foot. No player is bigger than any club. It's as simple as no. that. 
Yeah, it, yeah. You know that, I mean? That's what I kind of meant. I, I didn't mean it that Williams into good football. We know he could be, but yeah. don't get your turned elsewhere. Just concentrate on the job what you're doing. If you yeah, want to, if you want to that move, you to put the work in. You, you know, if, is, is it disappointing you didn't get the move in that? Thing? Yeah, but also you've got to remember you're also employed and you're under contract with Barnsley Football Club at this yeah. time. Yeah. Not to put your arm up your back to make you sign for us. Not yeah. to twist your arm. When we were signing you from, you know, like Herbie Kane, signing you from Liverpool when you were getting bit parts here and there mm-hmm. and, you, and you got your opportunity with Barnsley. And now, because you've had a couple of good seasons with us, you know, it's it's like you're now in the shop window and you've got the potential to move to, to a championship team where you're going to get paid the more grass. But mm-hmm. be thankful of that opportunity that, that, that you've been yeah. granted by the football club and don't think that you're better than us because you're, mm-hmm. you're not. You're not better than this football club. You're not. No player ever will be. No. So, you know, and and... And for me, I've never understood that that mentality of, of downing tools. I've never understood it because if I were a, perspe- a, a perspective buyer, and I were looking at that, um, look at that player and looking at his attitude, I think, yeah, he's a decent player, but you know, his attitude stinks. I mean, I mean, he's not getting his own way. It looks like yeah, he's he, 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 he down yeah. tools. You should be yeah, a consummate yeah. professional at all times. Yeah, fair comment. Yeah. Um, Scott Gilmore, I don't think it's the player's fault. Uh, sorry. I don't think it's a player's at fault. I truly think it's the tactics that Collins picks, which clearly isn't working. I don't think he knows how to manage a team. And I kind of get where you're coming from with Scott. I mean, Andy, I don't know if what your thoughts are on, on this, but I kind of get where Scott's coming from, is that it's not the player's fault. I think it works both in both. But I also think Collins' tactics is questionable at best. Some of his comments where he's come out with, again, questionable at best. I think he's watching a different game. But in, I kind of flip it round. I've got, to, I've got to say, I can't like to say, yeah, it's Collins, it, it's, it's no good. But I kind of got to back Collins up a bit on this one, and I, I, I might get Pelton this in here. I don't know, but I've got, got to kind of back him up on here. When you think when Collins came in, a big move for him and his family over at Pond to here. A lot of the players have come and gone, i.e., Kitchen and that. So you're walking into relatively these are the players you've got to work with. He brought in two defenders, Pines and Earl, which were, you know, unfortunate for Pines. He looks a decent player. He also wanted strikers, a striking option, which we didn't get. You've got to look at what Collins has been left to work with. He's, he's probably wanting to play a better attacking football, but for some reason, he either don't rate these players, and I don't mean it disrespectful, but you look at these players that were signed in summer. Kaka Wuppeter went out on loan. Jack Shepard went out on loan. You know, Dallas went out on loan. Oli Shaw's gone out on loan. There's a lot of players that Collins either don't rate or don't think they're good enough for Barnsley. And these were signed previous to him. And I'm thinking, do you know what? If he's bringing in such as like Josh Earl and Pines, does he does he want to attract these players in? What he wanted to attract this striker and would have said, mm, 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 do you know what? It might be a bit too much. We've already got Cole. He's got his, his leading goal scorer. So he, do you think his hands might be tied in certain ways, Andy? Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt. Yeah, um, I mean, going back to that, uh, where Pat and Shepherd who's been sent out on loan, um, yeah. for the last couple of weeks, I've, I always have a look to uh, who's out on loan and see if they're starting. And I don't think they've been starting for the last couple of weeks, so I don't know what's happening there, whether they're injured or what. I don't know, but uh, I can't see a point to that if they're just not getting picked. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think uh, he yeah, has got his hands tied. End of day results. Uh, goes down to manager or head coach or whatever you want to call it nowadays. Um, but like, like I said before, uh, I, I don't think it's just his fault. I think a lot uh, needs to be put on uh, players' uh, shoulders as well. And that mm-hmm. the professional footballers, and like we touched on before, what Ryan said about, um, you know, they should be thankful that they're playing for us. Yeah. It's like going back. Uh, I think it was in the 80s when Alan Clark took them down pit. They should be thankful and think the sense lucky that they're doing this for a living uh, at our club. Duff uh, did that last year, didn't he? Wait, my, my name was him. Duff. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He did. And they Duff should be thankful uh, for yeah. that. So, you know, um, I can understand why, you know, that the, they wanted bigger moves. I, I, honestly, I do get that. But... Uh, I've got no problem, Andy. Any player wanting to move, I've, it, look, we've always been a I, I, I haven't got a problem with that. But while you're no. a Barnsley player, give it your all while you're in the red shirt. Exactly. Because, end of the day, 
the fans idolise you. The youngins look up to the players on that pitch. Football's not cheap nowadays. No, it's not. <laughs> Is no, it? It's not. Um, you know, I mean, I wanted to put Blackpool away, but uh, it's just it's just outpriced me. If I'm honest, mm. me and Maddie just can't afford to go. So things like that, you know, it, it, it's not a cheap thing to do. Uh, even um, season tickets, um, you know, it's not a cheap um, hobby now. If you want to, or passion, or whatever you want to call it, uh, I mm. personally think it's a passion more than an hobby for me because. You know, I'm bands with Thorn Phil, but uh, yeah, they, they, they just need to uh, think about that. You know, um, yeah, get you know, get back to basics. Um, but yeah, going back to Collins, I don't think he's uh, hands a, a tied. And I mean, everybody could see what we needed at transfer window, and we just didn't get it, did we? No. Uh, Dave Jones, I personally don't think Collins is top and man, uh, league one manager Neil. You do well at Cheltenham or Port Vale, it's not a big club like Barnsley. Hey, I'll set that big club remark all day long, Dave. Uh, <laughs> can't finish your loop. Uh, another again, I want to thank before people say, Oh, my questions, but all your questions have been great, don't get me wrong. But Dan Finity's gives you some thought provoking stuff, which has also triggered other people to uh, follow up on comments. So I appreciate uh, uh Dan Finity. This is another good one, and we'll come to you, Ryan, then we'll come to Andy on this as well. It says, what are your thought? What's what's your thoughts on the struggles at Oakwell? It's the biggest difference between Barnsley and the rest of the top six this season. Weird, and again, Danfinity, I could do probably do another live on this one, mate. And I hope yeah. uh, next Friday I will do and talk on this. But what's your thoughts on the struggles at Oakwell this season? What's the biggest difference, Ryan? I think the biggest difference, not just maybe the struggles this season, but I think overall. The, di the, the difference between us and the top six is, is the relationship between the fans and the board. You know, we have got those, you know, there were members of the board before or, and we got rid of the other two members, but that relationship is still fractured. And we get mixed messages from the board, don't we? We do get mixed messages from the board. Mm. And I think, you know, I think that while the, their intentions are best, the, it, a lot of the time it doesn't appear that way. And a lot of the time we get... Broken promises, and if you look how the club's been run this season, mate, with not I'm not about. I mean, the transfers have been we all know <laughs> bang average at best. You know, I mean, I don't mean the players because we have got an handful of good players in, but we've also not we, we work back. To like if you look at the likes of what Portsmouth did and what Bolton did and Derby did in in the January transfer window, and that's why they are where they are now. Hmm. They back the gaffer. They got some really good extra signings in, and now they're all flying. And we didn't. Yeah. We didn't. We got Josh Earl and, and, and Donovan Pines in. And, you know, and Pines, is now, and Pines looks a good signing. Earl looks a good signing. But, you know, Pines is injured now. So we've got Earl at left back and, that, and we've got no other no other striking options. Um, I think that's been a big difference is we didn't back as manager in, in, in January as well. And again, I think that's just the, it's just the relationship between the fans and the board because it got, you know, the, the season we went down two years ago, it, it, the, the, rela the relationship were completely and utterly shattered into a million pieces, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. and I'm sure <laughs> Def definite loop can can attest to that because you know obviously Portsmouth fell from Premier League down to Le down to League Two with with those cowboys that they had in for that for, for that length of time. They nearly bloody ruined the club, mm. um, you know. And I'm not saying that our owners are that bad, as bad as them, but I think that's the difference. And certainly from for, in the January transfer window. You know, you looked at what Bolton did and what Derby did and what Portsmouth did, and they all they all strengthened their teams and strengthened them well. If you look at what Aaron Collins is doing at Bolton, that you know what I mean? He's dipping his bread in. I think he's got. I mean, Dale will be able to tell us, but I think he's got six or seven goals. Mm. Um, you know, and he's been a great addition. Um, he put that ball in against us, didn't he, to get that one all at Bolton? I think that was his first game. He put that ball in, didn't he? That magnificent cross he put into the back post. So he made a difference right from the very start, and we. The, the players that we signed haven't done that, and we didn't get that extra strike, striking option. So for me, they're the they're the difference between yourself and the rest of the top six. Andy, um, yeah, I can echo that. To be honest, what Ryan's just said, I, I think it all boils down to different ambitions at different clubs. Uh, Bolton, Derby, big clubs. All, if I'm honest, um, I never thought I'd see in League One. Um, so th th they've got different ambitions than you know what we've got. Every club wants to get as 
you know, higher uh, than they possibly can. But oh, again, all boils down to um, our series, you having point money into the squad, uh, which Bolton, Udabis, Portsmouth um, has done. And it's showing now. It, it's, you know, it's showing we, we, we're just happier taking a gamble in, um, you know, um, players who's come out at lower leagues are unknown and hoping that uh, some will stick and, you know, some's gems where others mm. are just, you know, at other bigger clubs uh, like your Derby's and Bolton's, etc. They're just signing, well, let's be honest, just quality for League One. Quality other than quantity. So, yeah, kind of echo what you said there. I think recruitment's played a, a massive difference on where we are. And going back to the beginning of the season, compared to where we were at Wembley, you'd like to think we'd have uh, lose this is a springboard and like invested. We knew for sure the players were going to be going, but to invest in it, and I think someone's played British way, says something like this, so I'm going to get onto that in a minute. Uh, I love this name. Sir Bertram Trigger Tonks. Uh, Collins has declined recently. Kane Good, and God's where we are. He's lost it. God knows why. Love this name as well, Julie Robinson. Keep, I've got to say, love all names like that. I don't know. Thanks for answering. Not a problem, Julie. Um, good question as well about the unrest of the players. Uh, love this name as well. Play the British way. Uh, I love all your names. Any road. Mm. Uh, just certain ones that come out of Divinity Loop and Sir Bertram Trigger Tonks and that. Uh, play the British way. It says, We're all here saying Collins this and Collins that. We're about the board. Home um, for the second season. Good point. In a row, under invested again and brought people in. To send out on loan, uh, also cough couch what is 600k? Come on, <laughs> and that's that's the thing, isn't it? It's like again, only only we, we, we all knew, and then when you hear the only thing for me was, and I don't know why we don't do it or why the question was answered one of these fan forums is that he got questioned about all oh, this money, what's coming from my like, Anderson and Kitchen, and oh, it's coming in installments, a million quid, and this over. So can't, does that mean that we can't go to clubs and offer an instalment plan? Do we have to cough up front, man? What's different? I mean, Luton in Premier League, we've got millions. Yeah, you know, for three and a half million pounds for Anderson, reportedly, that's what it was. We, but it, we've accepted a, a, an instalment plan. Gee, what is it? Chuffing higher car, higher purchase car or something. They've just got up to Premier League, what's got, what, 80, 90, 100 million pound TV deal. Yeah. Three and a half million quid. We could pay that for it, you know, probably a month's interest. We're like bride house, aren't we? Jesus Christ. No, really. <laughs> no, wonder, no wonder they've gone. Christ <laughs> almighty. Uh, I, don't, I don't get it. And I get where you play British ways on about. It's like... Well, yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. It's like yeah. underinvested again. But we come up... But I'll tell you what we do as a board. We'll say that, oh, no, we ain't got all this money, though. We've got, like, a million pounds for instalments. Why won't the question asked? How long are these instalments for? When are we expecting next instalment? And why can't we go to a, 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 a club or this play across like 800 grand? Ooh, we haven't got 800 grand. This we're going to have to pay it up. Well, can't we pay by installments, son? You know, none of these questions were asked. Why? Because it's an uncomfortable question. Well, I'm asking it now. Why can't we as a club go to another club and say, oh, we fancy this. I mean, it were a rumor that we're after a, a defender. It round about 800 grand. <laughs> If we're offered about a million votes, it's a million pounds we can't afford. Well, it's funny how we set an instalment plan off for a Premier League side. It was like swimming in millions. And you tell me we can't do the same? Come on. Yeah, good point. That. Don't don't always... And again, people get blinkered by this. They, they accept an answer rather than chase it up. Chase an answer. Mm. There's got to be an answer to the question. Oh, yeah, but uh, yeah. we get in instalments. Well, can we do it for his next player then? But nobody asks it. Why? Because it don't tick a box. I'm fed up with ticking boxes. Ask a question. It's all about opinion. It's not unreasonable for me to ask it. Well, don't we do that as a club? Do we ever think about doing that as a club? We could turn around and say, well, we've tried, but we aren't. Fine, you've tried. But you never get the full version. I want a full version, me. I don't want to know how much is spent and what his wages on, but at least I've been made an attempt to do this. But no, we just get an answer, we accept it, and we move on. We get side shifted, we throw a curveball. People start asking questions. This new fan advisory group start asking the relevant questions and not just be a box ticker in a behind the closed meeting door. Answer to the fans. The fans need answers. The fans are unhappy at the moment of a style of play on the pitch. People are starting to turn. And we're in the playoffs. How bad's that when we're in the playoffs and we start to turn? 
For me, yeah. that's worrying. That's worrying for me, that. Yeah. And I, I agree what he's saying, play the British way. It's not, I'm not, I don't want to point finger all at Collins. I don't think anybody's no. a pointing finger all at Collins. I mean, no. he's making the tactical decisions on the field that are, and, and, and the style of play and the substitutions, etc., that's leading to the frustrations in, 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 in the stands. But also, he has been dealt a bit of a, you know, a poor hand with, with, with being let down by board with, with regards to signings and not and, and not backing him. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's from top to bottom, isn't it, really? Yeah. Top of course to it is. Uh, Tony Bell, evening lads, definitely feel the players have uh, regressed. Don't know if confidence coaching, lack of interest or don't uh, like his tactics. I think it's culmination of everything there, Tony. I think you've summed it all in a nutshell, yeah. mate. Yeah. Uh, Dave Jones, when you see finger pointing and arguing on pitch, Neil, that's the problem for the dressing room. Exactly. Yes. And again, what you see on pitch, it's only going to go elsewhere. And again, we're not privy to it. Uh, Dave Jones, we had a few games with finger pointing uh, for our first season back in League One. Next thing you know, our captain, Servic, Sirkovic, yes, uh, got sold to Stockport. Uh, there was a problem because it all changed after that. And again, you have unrest in the dressing room in the locker and it turns into at the pitch. The fans are not blind. They can see what's going off at pitch or what's not going off at times. So again, it happens at other clubs. Uh, fans are paying their wages for God's sake, earn your money. Yeah. AFL yeah. sanctions in the background could be an affecting team club morale. That's a good one. Yeah, there's only external excuse I could give for the bad performances. Another one there by Jed. And again, I haven't said it, but I thought about it. So I'm glad someone else had mentioned it. Because people might be saying, oh, Neil, you're fetching up all negative points and comments and all this and other. I'm I'm only saying what's happening at the minute. And at the minute, the fans out here what's not wanting questions. Another one's here by Jed. The AFL sanctions in background. That haven't been brought up yet. Mm. <laughs> so if it's something else, something else could yeah. another curveball. But we'll put a spin on it and we'll think, I will think what we can do, but it won't us. It won't under our ten, yeah. It won't under Conway and Lee, yeah. But we're certain board members who were on the board back then when it was all happening. I don't want to say what else because there's still things going off. But Colin Williams not championship players. Certainly not um, showing it. No, Jonathan Pickering. If we don't go up and we think Kane, Williams, Cole, and Cadden uh, want to wave and they need to pick. Uh, Pick their moves carefully because none of them, for me, are constant enough to make it for the long in the uh, championship. And again, going back to you, uh, this Andy, we uh, Styles saying that the grass in tower is greener. And yeah. I, I, I kind of get where it is coming from, Jonathan, here on that one, mate. It's it's true, isn't it? Because grass in tower is greener when you move, is it? No, well, it's like with managers as well. When uh, uh, Duff went to Swansea, mm. they don't think about that. They just think about uh, cash, don't they? Uh, which mm. again. Honestly, I do get, but they, they don't think about long term, do they? Uh, mm. that they but uh, now it's not always uh, greener other side of the fence now. No, Ryan, it's just what I'm most going to agree with. It's not always greener, mate, is it? Sometimes you've got yeah. to be lucky where you are playing, you know. You, uh, again, Dave Jones calls it a big club in League One, but for me, Barnsley are always a massive club. But people say, oh, yeah, it's Barnsley. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you play in League One. Potentially, you're looking, we should be in championship. And I'm not being big headed about it, but I think we we could be with ground, with facilities, and training pitch. What we've got, we should be a solid championship club. And yeah, if these players knuckle it. down, they should be like, you know what? This is what we can achieve here. Yeah. yeah, we used to be, didn't we, Neil? We used to be. We used to be. We used to be, mate. Yeah. We were a, we were a set, set, you know, a second tier stalwart, weren't we? Yeah. So. Uh, Mick Tomo, uh, 9292. It's total shit show. No ever changes it up. Well, from bar to players. Yeah, it might get better for a while, but it always finds its way back to what we all know. Being a Barnsley fan is frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't say how we're any different to that. So it's good. <laughs> Cheers, Mick, and good night. And thanks for joining. Summed, summed, it, summed it up in a nutshell there. Yeah. <laughs> being a Barnsley fan is frustrating. You're fucking not wrong, mate. It's good to have been in Come on it for five minutes. Sure, could have been all over in that comment. On, on I'm only joking, Mick. Uh, Tom, I'm only joking, mate. But it's, it's right, though, isn't it? It's like uh, I'd give us five seasons to get back. Uh, however, no promotion after the season's play goes out. Our contract will probably move. And get ready for a long rebuild of a two to three seasons. And you know what? It, it easily, easily happen. Now I could see. If yeah. You look at you look at yeah. Um, Chef United were down there. Leeds were down there for a long time. Ipswich. Sunderland were down there four or five years. Ipswich were down for four seasons. Portsmouth world beaters this season. They were in there for yeah. eight, their eighth year in League One. Yeah. It, it yeah. can happen, mate. It can. Yeah. And, and and there's bigger clubs than us that have struggled in that league for longer Shelton. than we have. 
So Charlton, the, yeah. yeah. Navona was like mid-table, if, if not exactly. Mid-table. Yeah, yeah. And that's a decent stadium and all, but you know, the potential is there, so it's it's an hard one to get out to. Yeah. Uh, Tony Bell, I think the fans would forgive a lot if they, if the team gave maximum effort and tried to play without fear. Someone has to pick the ball up, drive forward, commit defenders, otherwise we won't break teams. And again, why other complicated football? Tony, somebody took there, get the ball, drive at teams, create chances. Yeah. Wow. I, I totally agree with him. I totally agree with him. The, the, the fans will be a lot more forgiving if the players look like they were putting a massive shift in. Um, you know, and you know, and if you get beat, which sides always get beat, best teams at will get beat. Yeah, if you lose, enough. it's how you lose when you lose. It's like, did you put a shift in? If that, yeah. if you put a shift in and you play well, fans will forgive you. They will forgive you for it. But there's no forgiving when you just look, you, you just turn up, you look like you're going through motions. That that will yeah. really, really piss fans off, good and proper. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Andy, do you agree? You know what I think Ryan's like summed it up here, you know, well I'd be here, just yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Uh Dave Jones, yeah, Ryan. Colin's banging them in now, mate. Scored against the in last game at Bristol Rovers. He's coming good after uh, he was League One player of the season last season. Yeah. Uh the infinity look best of luck for the rest of the season, chaps, except for Chosen Night. Hey, <laughs> I, I tell you something, I tell I tell you something in our definity, you've got no to fear, mate. I tell you, honest to God, you've got nothing to fear against us. And that's me as a Barnes fan. It pains to say this. I, I'd, be, I'd, I'd love it to say, you know what, we're going to get a very good game and be, be on your guard. I'll tell you what, mate. I'll take a draw now. I was going to say, yeah. if you offered me a draw, I'd say, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> tell you, mate. If we turn up anything like we've been playing of late, they'll, they'll, it'll be a cricket score on Tuesday night. So, yeah. Yeah. Long track, long track, and all. Enjoy football, championship maybe. next year, pal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's Enjoy the thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Been, yeah, I mean, they deserve it. They've been brilliant this year, Paul. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at the table it's like it. now. Uh, the player 42 over 126, drawn 12, lost four. You know what I mean? 90 points. So you, you can't be a grudge any team doing that. Yeah, uh, and again, that Portsmouth, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I wish Portsmouth fought well, if I'm being honest. It's not just because he's on, on here. You got to see how much he was there. Yeah, they're yeah. a good club. We're proper fans. They're a good old-fashioned football club. We, 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 you know, we're really, we're a real loyal fan base. And similar to us, you know, really, aren't they? Really similar to us. Yeah, you know, they've got, they've got, a, they've got great fans, um, and they've been through, they've been through Maya, shall we say? Mm. Mm. And you know, they deserve to be where they be. And I wish them, you know, wish them all the best of luck next season. Yeah, yeah. I think. Too. Do you know what? I think uh, I can relate to. I don't know what your guys think about this. You might think I'm wrong or what, but I can see. The, the similar traits to Ipswich Town last season, uh, I'm, I'm comparing them to something like Portsmouth, where I thought Ipswich should, I wanted Ipswich to do well. Because when they come to work well, they were by a, mile, a, a million miles, way better than us on the night, but the best team oh, that yeah. had gone, come to work well yeah. last season, Ipswich Town. Uh, and Portsmouth, you know, and uh, we all ate them down road, don't we, uh, in, in, in the other side of South Yorkshire. But no, Ipswich for me, for me, by far, a country mile. And it was uh, proved in championship. You're back your manager and look where they are now. And I'm wanting to go up me because we had no parachute payments. I, I'd love them to go up me automatic. I'd yeah, love them to go too. up uh, Ipswich. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I, think right, I, think, I think I think a little bit of investment at Portsmouth next season, I think they'll, 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 they'll do well. Got a good manager. Yeah, got a good manager. Yeah, and and I genuinely, same, genuinely same as well, well. While, while Dave's on, I'm not, I'm not just saying this because Dave's on because I did predict Bolton to go up automatic this season at the beginning of the season. I thought they, mm, I thought they did, go up. Yeah. but just to shut Derby fans up, Dave, let's. I genuinely hope Bolton go up because just to shut them back, them Derby gobshites up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I, you know what we've got a game in hand, and I can see there's only two points behind, and I, I hope Bolton go up and all. I hope Bolton go up because yeah. another another. Another decent club, another big club. Another, you know, another Bolton are good from just, Maya, yeah. You know, they were so close to losing the football club and they've come back and, yeah. you know, I love it, that stadium. I love I love going to, what we used to call it, Reebok, didn't we? whatever it's called again this season. But it's, it's, it's a great stadium and they've got, you know, they've got great fans. So, yeah. um, I genuinely hope that, I genuinely hope Bolton can get that second place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Danny Osborne, anyone watching us can't work out our system. Nearly full season, no identity. That's a worrying sign. Yeah. Uh, Dan, yeah. yeah. Uh, is anyone sick of uh, lack of communication to Russell Absolutely. starting? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to, yeah. Russell starting uh, over over midfielders. 
<laughs> Gotta be very careful what I say, yeah. Is it uh, so difficult for clients to come out and tell us if a player is uh, ill or carrying a knock? <clears throat> I'll come on to this in a minute. Let me get through comments. And then, because we've been on like an hour and nine, so I will kind of wrap it up because we've football on and stuff. Jonathan, picking the thing, the difference now is crying, love the club. And if you needed a quality sign, he would pay for it out of your own pocket. But he didn't. Yeah, he did it with Sam Winnell and he did it with Adam Hamill. Um, he went out and did it, even though he were, oh no, we're not going to. But he had the best intentions of the club. Uh, I think Sam Winnell won 250 grand and he pulled off a deal to get uh, Adam Hamill back because he'd gone to Wolves yeah. and he took my cart and he come back here. Uh, two, two players. We all know about Sam we know, you know, last stages, but when, when we signed him, we were knocking goals in and back were crying. Uh, we did that, so fair play to crying. Uh, going to be hard in League One next season, mate. This is uh, the year to get out. Yep, yeah, and I think you'll do yeah. it, like what Ryan said. Yeah. Mick Tomo, uh, lads, and on art, the way we are playing, if we draw, if we are drawing, drawn against Beachbridge, do you think we will win that tie to get to the final if we play Bolton or Derby? Uh, and on art, Mick, from me, I'll say no. I don't think we're strong enough for the two games, if I'm being honest. Uh, Andy, will we be strong enough if we if we've got Peter in uh, semi final? Uh, sorry, in uh, yeah, semi final. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd agree with you, Neil. I don't think we're quite strong enough, if I'm honest. Um, no, I, I, I can't see us. Do we? To be honest, if we don't go up. Um, I prefer us just to be sat up playoffs anyway. There's no worse than gaining playoffs anyway and just making a complete um, mess in it. Mess of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if we did get Peter, but again, pains me to say it and it's hard to say, but no, I think of it two legs. I don't think we're going to be uh, strong enough. I honestly don't. Mm-hmm. I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope we. I, I, hope, I, hope, <laughs> I hope this time yeah, next season. Wrong, yeah. Yeah. I hope this time next season we're running about, uh, you know, uh, trying to stay in championship. championship. Yeah. yeah, but uh, I can only say what I feel at the minute. You know, I, th- yeah. I think I think for me it's just if you look at his record against top eight this season, it's been it's been very hit and miss, and it? it's not it's not it's not yeah. been So so mm. you, you know, if you look at the way that we're playing at the minute and and as as record against top eight all season. The, the 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 stats would suggest um no but you know it's i think when it it they all say when when playoffs come in for for form but goes out at window doesn't it so i don't know i mean we've taken one point off peterborough this season mm-hmm. um we took four of them but no we took three we we, we shared points last year didn't they we, we yeah. they beat them up we beat them at theirs and they beat us at ours mm-hmm. so his recent form against peter has not been so good but even if we end up in if i mean if we end up in six and we end up with Bolton or derby in semis i don't think we'll be, i don't think I, not only do i think that we're strong enough at the moment i don't think we've got the squad and the depth in squad to cope with the intensity of 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 the of the playoffs no yeah and you know and, what and they, and they have and and they have you know they this have, time last got, year they've got, man, they've got guys that can come off bench and change the game and, and, yeah. and we have we, and we this, have it. and this time yeah. last year I'm looking forward to the playoffs. I'm thinking, yeah, we can. It don't matter who we get. I'm confident yeah. we're going to go Wembley. I I've, felt yeah. that way. This time, I thought I'm we thinking, could run through walls last year, mate. I thought we were going to do it. I generally thought yeah. I was, I was yeah. so confident we were going to win playoffs. I was, yeah. I was just so confident we were going to do it. So, yeah. uh, hope so, Ryan. Clubs like Bolton, Barnsley, Pompey, says it shouldn't be in the third tier. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, do you know what, uh, Dave? And I think we said this last year when uh, we don't remember bring up old wounds about but what happened at last year's semi-final i was if it had gone up i were hoping that you'd have been going up for the year after mate um because i know that you always got time out and stuff like that but i've got a lot of time for clubs like that and what ryan said via bolton have been through my portion five we have you know there's other clubs in there blackpool another another team yeah, that's been through my they're knocking on the way lincoln city another well-run club uh, you know uh, I've got time for Leighton Orient, Richie Wellens, another side that likes to play football and get it down. You know, there's them kind of teams and clubs you look at, you think, yeah, do you know what? I've got a bit of time for Peterborough, if I'm being honest. Because, uh, again, another club like us, a bit like Yo-Yo, but they, they tend to try and go and take that, you know, we're in semi-final last year, so they're there for a reason. And just because you show when you're back, your manager and stuff like that, consistency, we don't. We chop and change. You look at Ian Everett, what he's done at Bolton. Him time, things haven't been going right, but you stand by him and look. You, you're knocking on, you know. I, I remember when Dave said, 
I think you lost it, uh, Black, uh, Blackpool. Month or two ago now, and you're saying that third section we're calling Ian Evan at. Look what he's done here. Bang. It points off from automatic. So again, he invest in the squad wisely in January, which we all kind of know that that's been one of his failings. And it comes back to bite you in the long run. You can't keep hoping and thinking, oh, yeah, we might get away with it. You can't do things on cheap all the time. Sometimes you need to add that bit of quality in. Um, we'll be wrapping it up soon, but thanks for everybody for joining on hour 15. Uh, Chapel, another one we like to go cheaply, don't. You know, Chaplin says it all, doesn't it? With Chaplin, uh, I think next season he, he actually came out and called a few things out as well when uh, we were at Ipswich and about how the things were happening behind the scenes. I think next season, uh, when we're still in League One, um, one we uh, should get rid of is Deadwood and Fox and Youth and experience together, and I think it'll help us more. Yeah, I agree with that. So, we'll 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 kind of tidy up on that. Thanks everybody for what's we comments, what's been going through. So and in red corner, I mean, just going what Scott said here, it's, again, no matter what happens, if, if you are in League One, it's time to get shut to, you know, the, the dead wood. You're carrying passengers and people, invest in youth, invest in some experience, and try and build a foundation and build a base, Andy, surely. That's what it is, isn't it? Building that base, and I think that's what, like, clubs like Bolton and Portsmouth's got anyway, in it, to, you know... Um, when and if they go up, uh, that's what they've got a good base. Um, mm. We need to, I, I mean, it's like covering all ground in it, like, but uh, we seriously need to think about uh, as recruitment policy rather than getting uh, like unknowns and gambling on lower league players. Um, if there were a mixture between us and Derby, I think you'd have a good club. If I'm honest, because Derby gets like all experienced players, don't they? And we go other way. Uh, it's it's just that blend. Um, whether we'll do it or not, I highly doubt it. If I'm honest, um, I think we'll stick to as normal transfer policy. Um, we'll probably see a few more youngins next season. Again, uh, they'll just be there to try and uh, look good and uh, hopefully. Uh, you know, uh, sell on, uh, which is uh, which is a shame, really. But uh, I, I, I don't know. It's <sighs> I just can't put it into words. Our uh, offer traps we've come off um, in the last couple of weeks. It's just so demoralising, and you know, you know, when you've got no confidence in your own club at the minute, it's it's hard to find a positive, but uh, yeah. Anyway, that's that's next season. Let's hope uh, you know that's all. Uh, you know that's all done in championship for us. But uh, um, at the minute, it looks a long, long way off. I'm afraid. If you are in League One, Ryan, just what like what Scott was saying there, on about you know get you to Deadwood. Let's focus on the, you know, the quality, the youth, invest in that, invest in experience. You'd think. You need to build an identity, a foundation, something to build on, mate. Uh, we all rave about Jallo, you've got Pines, all being well, you've got Luke O'Connell, it could be more or less as a spine there. You've got to add quality to it, but surely you can't just be adding quantity to it all the time, Ryan. Whatever, sorry, I'm muted. Whatever, yeah, no. whatever, whatever we division we're in next year, regardless, it's going to be a build, it's going to be a massive rebuild job, mate. And mm. like you uh, Hopefully we can retain some of his players we've got now, some of his key players um, and experience, um, and then and then bring some of youth through. Look how successful our youth has been of late. Look how good they've been doing. Look how how, how much of a good job Nicky and and, and Bobby Astle have been doing with, with those um, with those players. So it's time to you know you spend that much money and that much effort in there. Surely that some of those should be coming through into the first team, and I think it's going to be required. We're going because if we are in League One, we're going to have to cut us cloth accordingly. Because mm. if you look at how much we've lost money the last two years, you can't just keep losing money over and we're going to end up with a points deduction, and and, and you know, yeah. and Nareev can't just keep ploughing money into the club, can he? So mm. we're going to have to cut us cloth accordingly. I think you'll see more more at youth coming through, Neil. But I. I I, I think next year, if, if if we don't, if we don't, if we're in league, what well, even if we're in championship, I think we still think we need a new manager, mate. Uh, you know, Neil Collins is going to stay with what end it year, but I don't think he's the answer moving forward. 
So I think it's a you know the new the new director of football has got a job on his hands. Should we say that? That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Dave Jones, uh, cheers, fellas. Good luck against Reading. Oh, you've had a good weekend. Oh, you have a good weekend. Uh, you fans deserve success. Cheers, Dave. Appreciate that, mate. Same to you. Uh, and blend of youth, uh, sorry, blend of experience, journeymen and youth, unless some uh, our cons gets us there. It's going to be an interesting next couple of weeks, isn't it? It's uh, pitch coming up thick and fast, last four games like now. And to be fair, I'm not just looking now, you know, at our results. I'm also looking whatever we do. I'm also looking at such as what Oxford and Lincoln, maybe Blackpool as well. Chucking Stevenage is about six, seven points. It's four games. It only takes, yeah. you know, a, lo- a couple of losses. I can't see out at Portsmouth. Reading, I think tomorrow's game is going to be very, very interesting against Reading. Very yeah. interesting. From five yeah. o'clock. Oh wow! Well, get ready. We'll lot, I think we'll know a lot more about where where where. I could see it socials. Yeah, I could see socials going on fire tomorrow if we don't go his way. And but that's another day. Um, Andy in the corner. Ryan will be the tyke. Appreciate you taking time out and joining me. Uh, thanks to everybody in the live as well. If you're going to be watching back, thanks for all the comments. And again, it's all about football. It's all about opinions. We've tried. Oh, I think we've been respectful. We've called it out for what we've seen. We haven't slated anybody personally, and that's what we don't uh, do. But at the day, at end of the day, you've got to call it for what you see it for. Uh, and again, it's not if it's rosy, it's good. Well, if it's bad, you've got to call it. Uh, but yeah, thanks for everybody who's joined. And it's also interesting to know your thoughts as well about certain issues. You've also triggered other people's comments on stuff and people from the clubs, i.e., uh, the Pompey fan and the Bolton Wonders fan, Dave, and uh, you know, it's. Uh, I'm gonna have definite, to get, definite loop on it, I think. Loop, yeah, yeah. Definitive loop, yeah. Definitive loop on Dave yeah. Jones. I appreciate it. Um, oh, yeah, good results tomorrow, apart from Reading and Barnsley, though. But we'll, we'll wait to see for that one. Uh, have a good rest of your weekend. One thing left to say, you Reds. <laughs>